natural disasters do happen. Of this, the most feared are earthquakes because it can happen anytime and anywhere without prior warning. In this video lesson, we will explain what faults are, what have scientists learned about seismic waves, and how do we keep safe from earthquakes and its effects. To really understand what faults are, we need to recall the general structure of the Earth. The figure shows the visualization of the internal structure of the Earth. The crust is the thinnest and the topmost layer of the Earth's structure. However, the crust does not exist as one single piece. It is in fact broken in huge blocks called plates. Some plates carry continents which are mostly made of granite and others carry oceans which are made of basalt. Beneath the Earth's crust are other layers such as mantle, that is the thickest layer of the Earth where convection current occurs, and the innermost layer and is divided into solid inner core and liquid outer core. The crust and the uppermost part of the mantle together form a solid rocky sphere called lithosphere. Scientists believe that the lithosphere is broken into segments called lithospheric plates and these plates are moved by hot plastic mantle beneath the lithosphere. Faults are rock fractures where a block of rock moves with respect to one another. Faults are most obvious indication of earthquake activity. Faults are breaks in the weak parts of the Earth's crust which requires energy to move objects. Movements of the chunks of crust involve great amounts of energy. The movements are caused by force called stress. Deforming force are called compression when they push rocks together, tension when they pull rocks apart, and shear when they move rocks along each other. A fault line is known as the trace of a fault. It is the most visible part of a fault. However, as the fault cuts through the layer of soil, some parts may not be readily identified unless one cuts across the layer of the soil. Fault cuts through rocks forming two blocks. These blocks may be classified as either the hanging wall or the foot wall. The hanging wall is the part of the fault that is leaning on the foot wall. It is a portion immediately above the fault. The foot wall is the portion that is being leaned on and the surface below the fault. It has relatively wider base as compared to the hanging wall. The arrangement of these parts varies with the movements of the ground during an earthquake. Faults can be classified as deep sleep or strike sleep. Deep sleep faults are further classified as normal or reverse. A deep sleep fault refers to the faults where movement of blocks is parallel to the deep of the fault surface. Imagine deep sleep faults as the inclined fractures where the block moves vertically upward or downward. If the block above the fault line moves down, the fault is termed as normal. In portions of the cross where there is tension, the two blocks move apart. As the separation progresses, a point is reached where the hung wall suddenly drops. In contrast, if the blocks of the rocks are subjected to compression, the two blocks are pushed toward and against each other. The forces and movements are the opposite of those in normal fault. It is therefore called the reverse fault. In a reverse fault, the hanging wall moves upward relative to the foot wall. A thrust fault is a type of reverse fault whose deep is less than 45 degrees. A strike-slip fault is a result of the sideways movements of blocks of rocks. In a strike-slip fault, neither hanging wall nor foot wall is moving up or down. Rather, the blocks move laterally in opposite directions. A strike-slip fault can offset the flow of streams present in a given area. Crustal movements and displacements are expected and detected in active faults. An active fault is a fault where the movement or slippage is expected to occur. An active fault has generated earthquake within 10,000 years. An inactive fault is a fault that has ceased activity for a long time, around 10,000 years. 
unlike active faults, inactive faults do not disturb or break all the layers of the soil. An earthquake happens when two blocks of earth suddenly slip past one another. At the fault, the location where an elastic rebound occurs is called the focus of the earthquake. It is the location below the earth's surface where the earthquake originates. The focus is also called as the hypocenter. The spot on the surface directly above the focus is called the epicenter. When a fault snaps, a very large amount of energy is released from the focus. This energy is transmitted as waves through the lithosphere. To determine its size and strength, an earthquake is gauged in three ways. Seismologists can measure the extent of destruction caused by the earthquake, amount of energy released at the focus, and the distance the ground has shifted along the fault. An earthquake is described by its intensity and magnitude. Historically, Earthquakes were first described in terms of the amount of damage called intensity. It is determined by actual observation or on-site inspection of the affected areas including interviews with the people. Several factors affect the intensity of an earthquake. Among these are the following. Distance from the epicenter of the earthquake. Defective building design and substandard materials kind of ground where structure was built, and slope of the land where the house was built. Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology provides a scale similar to modified Mercalli called FIVOX Earthquake Intensity Scale. The scale was based on the rossi forel scale which was also used as a basis for the development of the 12-point modified Mercalli scale. The intensity is expressed from 1 being the weakest and 10 being the strongest. Magnitude is the measure of the energy released by the earthquake and is measured by an instrument called seismometer. The instrument used to detect seismic waves are called seismometer. A seismometer is attached to a recorder which produces a record of seismic waves. The magnitude is calculated from the height of the largest wave. Magnitude is expressed in Richter scale. The Richter scale uses Hindu-Arabic numerals with values from 1 to 10. Earthquakes are seismic waves. Seismic waves vibrations of the Earth is caused by sudden release of energy stored in rocks that have been deformed by forces that originates from the moving tectonic plates. Earthquakes produce seismic waves that can travel through rocks. Path where seismic waves travel can be used to determine the medium in which they traveled. The two types of seismic waves are body waves and surface waves. Body waves refer to the vibrations that travel through the interior of the Earth. Two types of body waves are primary waves or P waves and secondary waves or S waves. Primary waves are longitudinal waves where the particle motion is parallel to the direction of the wave. It can also travel through solids, liquids, and gases, but they can travel faster in solids. On the other hand, secondary waves are transverse waves. Whether the direction of the particle motion is perpendicular to the direction of the wave, it can only travel through solid materials. Surface waves refer to the vibrations that travel through the surface of the Earth. Surface waves can be classified as Rayleigh wave or love waves. Love waves travel in side-by-side -side motion. Rayleigh waves travel in an elliptical motion and it is the last type of seismic wave recorded by a seismograph. However, only the body waves are used in studying the Earth's internal structure. Earthquakes can be destructive, but most deaths associated with earthquakes are caused by its effects. Among these are tsunamis, which is a huge wave caused by an earthquake that originates under the ocean and can cause great destruction when it reaches land. A sage, which is a standing wave in an enclosed or partially enclosed body of water. 
Another major secondary hazard associated with an earthquake has been possibly fire breaking after an earthquake. Earthquakes have happened many times in the past, but the frequency and the intensity of the earthquakes have risen lately. Since an earthquake can strike any time, it is important that everybody prepares for it. The following are safety and precautionary measures before an earthquake. Hang heavy items such as pictures and mirrors away from beds, couches, and anywhere people sit. Repair defective electrical wiring and leaky gas connections. These are potential fire risks. Familiarize yourself with exit routes. Know where the fire extinguishers, first aid kits, alarms, and communication facilities are located. Learn how to use them beforehand. Conduct and participate in regular earthquake drills. These are the things that you need to do during an earthquake. Be calm, alert, and don't panic. Drop to the ground, take cover by going under a sturdy table or a piece of furniture, and hold on until the shaking stops. Stay away from glass windows, outside doors and walls, and anything that could fall, such as lighting fixtures or furniture. If you are outdoors, move to an open area. Avoid stopping near under or under buildings, trees, overpass, and utility wires. After an earthquake, go out safely. Be prepared for aftershocks. Once the shaking stops, take the fastest and the safest way out of the building. Do not use elevators nor enter damaged buildings. Keep yourself updated with the latest emergency information using battery-operated radio, television, or mobile phones. Lastly, check yourself and others for injuries. Check for damaged electrical and water lines that may cause other damage. If you want more science videos, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thank you and always remember that you are all awesome.